Hey, how's it going, y'all? It's your boy Big Black Crypto here. And I got something juicy for you. No, I mean like juicy. So Holochain's, they filed for a US patent and it's been granted for Holochain's distributed app framework and it's patent number 10,951,697. You know, 10,951,697. And you gotta love the reasoning for doing it. They're sincere about, you know, protecting and conserving the ecosystem and that is holochain so patents protect how innovations can be used this patent is intended to protect the holochain open source project from trolls who could file patents on our technological innovation and then use them to prevent us from implementing it that's what holochain is posted to twitter now let's go dive deeper into the full press release so uh, this one was, so Thursday, the 25th, March, 2021 is when it was released from Gibraltar for immediate release and a big step forward for the P2P web, Holo Limited was granted a U.S. patent for the RRDHT networking innovations within Holochain. RRDHT is a peer to peer networking design implemented in Holochain that describes a system of nodes communicating according to a relaxed agent centric distributed hash table. Hollow is owned by, in full by the Holochain Foundation, a nonprofit organization based in Gibraltar, and formal transfer of this patent to the foundation will be completed this month. You can read more about this patent number, 10,951,697, in the original documentation, United States Patent and Trademark Office website. So why file a patent? Holochain is an open source project, so why would we spend the time and money to file for a patent? It makes sense, right? The reality is that projects can be stopped in their tracks while using their own innovations if others are granted patents for their technology. In other words, this is a defensive patent. It is our intention to use the innovation and share it openly with the context of the Holochain open source framework. This patent is a critical component of the open source license used for Holochain. The cryptographic autonomy license cow was approved by the OSS in 2019 and it makes Holochain widely available to not only developers, but it also protects end user data rights. Licenses are only powerful as they relate to the intellectual property laws they are based on. The CAL's protections for Holochain and users for distributed apps built with Holochain are fully enforceable and this patent enables the enforcement both through copyright and also through patent law. Van Lindenberg, the IP attorney involved in writing the CAL and the patent application shares this. Patents protect how innovations can be used. In our case, the patent is intended to protect the Holochain open source project from trolls who would file patents on our technological innovation and then use them to prevent us from implementing it. The patent is also a critical component of the cryptographic autonomy license. Licenses are only powerful as they relate to the IP laws they're based on. Having this patent ensures that Cal is fully enforceable, which means it will protect the rights of end users to have sovereignty over their data, which is great. You know what that kind of means Facebook can't come in and say, hey, I want to buy this so you guys can use it, you know, keep using it, but I'm going to own your data. No, you stay in control. You know, you, you, you don't have to risk compromising yourself to keep in touch with family and friends. Yeah, that's kind of what you want. And that was uh, courtesy of Van Lindenberg and Taylor English. Now, the next subheading, what is technology innovation of the patent for a layperson? Well, in simple terms, this patent represents an easy way to represent complex distributed data models and manage them with high resilience. While it's possible to design computing systems that don't use state, many problems, particularly those that are designed to reflect human interactions and the physical world, are easier to model when the computing system has state. The patent focuses on the methods for saving, storing, and retrieving data in a multi-node computing system where no single node has a comprehensive index of nodes or content managed by those nodes. As you can see in the diagram be below, R at DHT, and by the way, I'm going to make sure you have a link to this just so you can get a, a vibe for it because this really is interesting. We get fast looks by being able to jump to known peer addresses across the circle. Like uh, The easiest way I was able to explain you know, the speed and the technology was, I, I, I hate to reference LimeWire, but LimeWire is an example, uh, other file sharing services, Shazam, Napster. Again, I don't like using those as examples, but those are the ones where I know a sizable number of the population, especially people 
within my age range, you know, 10 years plus, 10 years after, they know about peer-to-peer -peer networking. They know the speed of basically becoming, you know, having something in which others can draw and then it just pulls that information faster. People know that, but they don't understand when you say distributed hash tables. They don't understand when you say, um, you know, Hollow is like a, a form of GitHub, BitTorrent, and blah, 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 blah. It throws people off. So the easiest way I explain it to file sharing is like, well, you know, remember back in the day when you had LimeWire and you wanted that album and you, that you did, couldn't afford in your youth, but you're like, ah, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. And people get it. And then, then it registers like, oh, so it just gets faster the more people connect to it in order to, you know, basically have one file being shared amongst a lot of people. And, you know, and it's kind of like, in, in direct opposite of sharding, you know what I mean? Or, um, you know, look at Store J, for example, right? Um, or Harmony One, you know, they're making a killing, a killing, basically by, by reversing the process. But again, still blockchain on blockchain, they're still gonna need a framework to layer on, thank goodness they're ETH, and they're always welcome to, to stack as a protocol on top of Holochain. But continuing, um, we get fast lookups for by being able to jump to known peer addresses across the circle. Uh, and we have a simple way of representing who is responsible for holding data. This model turns out to be very efficient for managing a self-healing DHT. A self-healing DHT, a self-healing distributed hash table. So does that mean, does that mean there's some kind of machine learning in this thing? See, when you learn the terminology and you grow your acumen, there's one conversation being had and it's under the assumption that everyone's kind of like at this like sixth grade reading level. No offense, right? It's just the way a newspaper is written. You don't, ex you can't give everyone academic or scholarly detail and expect them to process it. You know, in many cases people get disinterested and they tune out. Whereas me, I hear certain things. I'm like, hey, self-healing, self-healing. You mean you got some machine learning going on? Like, I would really, really love to, like, ask some questions. But alas, I know I understand schedules are busy, but it would mean the world to me if I could actually ask, like, the chief architect, Arthur Brock, a couple questions, or anybody else from the dev team. And I, I guess at some point I'll be making that effort because I am thoroughly intrigued, thoroughly intrigued. There's actually certain protocols like I want to like, you know, second layers that I want to like stack on top of hollow chain. It is endless, endless, endless possibilities. Anywho. Now on. In the center of the circle, you're going to have like your data location, right? Now, the further you go, you're going to have peer storage and arc. Um, then from there, you're going to have peer location and it's, it's good stuff, man. Cause like from the agent location, you're going to have this location in the doesn't distributed hash table. So that's like your fork, I believe. And then agent storage arc store. I store all data located within this arc and I keep track of all peers located within this arc. So, so it's, it's actually quite interesting the way they've got this structured to be responsive. The team behind Holochain and the people behind this patent our team and community is deeply appreciative of the work that arthur brock david braden and jameson day have put into this achievement they are the authors of the innovation upon which this patent is based arthur is the co-founder of holochain david braden is the leader on the holochain core development team who was instrumental at implementing peer-to-peer -peer networking innovations in the framework jameson day is an architect and team lead who worked deeply with the holochain team for several years to iterate and improve the designs so about hollow Hollow is, dis is a distributed cloud hosting network and marketplace that enables peer-to-peer -peer Holochain applications to be used by regular web users. Hollow does to app hosting what Airbnb did to hotels. Anyone can use a spare computer to become an app host and get paid in a Hollow fuel for hosting distributed applications. Each host on the Hollow network sets their own prices and preferences for the apps they want to host, and each app publisher sets the hosting specifications required for the Holochain application. So can we just take that in one more time they mentioned hollow fuel 
And basically, each host on the Hollow Network sets their own prices and preferences for the apps they want to host. So basically, you're going to have the ability to host. You're going to be able to set your your, your own prices and get paid in Hollow Fuel. And then from there, you'll be able to take that Hollow Fuel, keep it, or, you know, exchange it. But again, you as things don't assume everything's set in stone until you see it unfold and and take place. Now, as far as Holochain is concerned, it's an open source framework and network protocol for developing peer-to-peer -peer scalable and efficient applications. It is fast, secure, versatile, which means it per if perfect for a wide range of everyday apps. Its long list of use includes social apps, team collaboration, and the internet of things, currencies, and much more. Holochain is a peer-to-peer -peer innovation beyond blockchain that can actually deliver on blockchain promises. Yo, shots fired. Brap, brap, in the air. Yo, that's disrespectful. That is really disrespectful. They said Holochain is a peer-to-peer -peer innovation beyond blockchain that can actually deliver on blockchain promises. That is thoroughly disrespectful. So as far as licensing and legal goes, um, Holochain is the only implementation of the RRDHT P2P networking innovation that they are aware of. Others interested in impl implementing based on it should contact the legal at holochain.org. And for more information, um, geez, 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 geez. I'm loving it though. I'm loving it. So you can only imagine what the, the, the crypto market is going to look like, right? Cardano's off in Africa. Meanwhile, Holochain is is like pfft, making headways in the U.S. Regulatory hurdles aside, there's an opportunity to be had in the U.S. 346 million users should not be stuck using PayPal. You know what I mean? Like, I know there's other alternatives and ways around, but I mean, shuffling your, your funds into, into Bitcoin to get the Uniswap, to get the here... For new users, you're going to get violated by paying high gas fees. Gas fees are, no, are are basically the exchange rates. Instead of paying, you know, a specific amount for X amount of shares, you know, most banks, you know, for will ballpark it and say like seven bucks. You know, you can do your transactions, but then once you go over a certain dollar amount, it's a set percentage rate. There is really no reason to pay gas fees if you don't have to. I've heard stories. From high-end traders, we're basically with Uniswap that it doesn't go through and you get stuck with the gas fee. And then suddenly you have to pay a new gas fee. And gas fees are always fluctuating. Whereas here, there's actually a, an efficiency to be had. 